Okay, welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Dr. Dennis Beck at the University of Arkansas. So, Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm, I'm an associate professor of educational technology. Um, I'm involved in K-12 online learning in, in a few different ways. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a researcher. I research digital educational equity for vulnerable populations, um, for example, like culturally and linguistically diverse students, special education students, with a focus on the primary and secondary levels. Um, and that um, relates to K-12 online learning uh, as one of my interests. Um, for example, a couple of studies that I've done, I've looked at using an immersive art curation virtual reality environment in K-12 online schooling for rural students. Um, I've also looked at special education students and their parents and looked at their satisfaction with cyber schools, um, looking at the impact of homework in these environments for students' achievement, um, looking at also uh, the virtual school field experiences for pre-service administrators. And in light of that, really focusing on how their training could potentially impact their um, there's these different vulnerable groups in their schools. Um, I'm also a founder and a school board president for a cyber school for the last seven years. It's kind of hard for me to believe it's been seven years. Um, it took a couple years to kind of get it up and running and starting. Um, and now I guess for the last five years now, we just got our charter renewed. Um, it's been a really challenging learning experience for me um, as I'm more of a researcher and a teacher and wasn't familiar with the school board responsibilities, um, but it's been interesting to see how research and practice don't always meet. Um, I've also really enjoyed getting to know our school leaders and our teachers, and uh, they're really the best, and they work really hard to meet the needs of students. Very good. So we've got a lot of teachers right now that are being thrown into this remote instruction some have been have been at it for a couple of weeks now uh, some of them are just getting started and i know you've done a lot of you mentioned several of the research studies you've done that look at you know both teacher training experiences as well as school leader training experiences uh, what's some advice that you'd give to, to folks that are finding themselves thrust into this now without a lot of background experience or training sure well as an ed tech professor I have a lot of students in that boat um, although they have more experience than most out there with technology integration um, here are a few things that I've told them and they've kind of kind of center around knowing your audience um, the first would be audience analysis. And I think all good teachers know that it's true. You have to do good audience analysis and know your students. Um, but many that I've talked to, I, I think it might just be the, the shock of this, of this crisis that we're in. They don't realize how much their students have changed in the last few weeks. Um, lifestyles have changed, where they learn has changed, even how they learn has probably changed and around whom they've learned. Um, and a lot of things could be different as a result. Um, to give a small example, I, I feel like my, uh, my instructions hasn't changed a lot. I teach online from the beginning of the semester and I'm still teaching online, but my online students were mostly asynchronous um, and they have pretty much demanded and, and, and requested to meet a couple times a week live uh, in addition. So we meet a couple times a week and we spend a lot of time just talking about their questions and uh, discussing potential answers and uh, sharing resources and uh, developing plans. So that wasn't something that we planned, but it's something that is working now in our courses. Um, another thing I think I tell my students that involves um, knowing your audience is personal touches. Um, students' families are in distress right now so they're going to have more trouble focusing on content and they need more personal touch. So um, one thing I would uh, suggest is just calling each student individually, if you can, to let them know that you're there for them and asking what help they need and trying to connect them to the resources that they need. It's not always about um, academic resources um, or needs. Um, and then I think also just is providing a lot of opportunities to see 
the other students that I put C in quotes there. Um, I know that a lot of teachers have gone to Zoom and that's okay, but the reality is that students are using, they're used to interacting with you in different ways face-to-face. -face, so you need to come up with different ways to interact with them online. Um, that might be Instagram or Facebook. You might try your hand at TikTok and doing a TikTok video or two. Um, you might text them or of course you're gonna email them. Um, but one of my favorites is I, I, I've gotten the personal addresses of my students. I like to drive by the student's house and drop a care package on their doorstep. Of course, everything properly wiped down and cleansed uh, beforehand. Um, but just those are a few different things that I um, advise my students. Very good. Very good. Now, we've got a lot of parents now whose role in the, the educational partnership has changed very much to be uh, to have a much more direct uh, role in supporting their kids. And um, I know that's something that you would have seen a lot of with your work with the, 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 the cyber school in Arkansas, as well as right now you're remote working. Um, I imagine, you know, their <laughs> wife is remote working as well. If I remember correctly, you've got three children um, three that children. you've got to, uh, you know, help support in that role. So, um, you know, with all of this sort of background, what's some advice you'd give to those parents that, you know, don't, that are experiencing this for the first time now in this really sort of direct way? That's a great question. And I mean, earlier in uh, both my wife's, or both my wife's and my careers, we homeschooled full time. Um, and um, I really enjoyed doing that. And we're not doing that now. But um, I think the first thing is to realize the place education is very important, but your relationship with your kids is more so. Um, spend t time doing things with them, that um, and more time with that than helping them to learn. So it might be board games, it might be video games, it might be walking in remote areas or biking in remote areas. Um, you might pack a lunch or get takeaway from a restaurant and take your family to a remote park um, and picnic those things. But with that said, focusing on the education process, a few things to realize. First of all, um, realize that it won't take your kids a full school day to do all their schoolwork. Um, that's because a lot of time in schools is taken up with classroom management. Not all the time, but there is some time that is taken up with classroom management. As a result, a lot of students are going to finish their formal learning activities in three to four hours a day. So game plan what they're going to do in those other three to four hours a day um, without that um, content. Um, another thing you can do is create several stations in your home and plan a different 30 minute activity for each one. A few examples might be um, an online program like ABC Mouse if you have really young children. And I'm not endorsing any particular programs, um, but it's for like ages two to eight. Maybe an art drawing time would be another time, um, another um, station. Um, you might have Khan Academy for math. Um, you might have a Mel science activity or something similar. Um, and varying activities so kids are having fun and doing something different every 30 minutes. Um, another thing is you're in the house. You can kind of get a little squirrely and not really want and not really um, get a lot of exercise. So make sure that you include physical exercise in your plan. Um, my wife did not endorse this, but I had my five-year-old run wind sprints yesterday between the back fences. Um, and he liked it, he had fun. Um, we also have a small trampoline um, that our children enjoy. And um, of course the internet has tons of free exercise videos for kids all the way up through teens. Um, and then one more thing, uh, working with mixed age kids, there's a couple of different strategies I've used in the past. And that is you can use the same topic from different ages um, and just vary the depth of the content, the different assessment, um, maybe a different learning activity, but the same topic. And then have a collaborative project where the kids of different ages work together um, and the older kid acts as a more knowledgeable other to scaffold the younger child. And then maybe they come back together and present at their different levels um, on the topic. I think finally, 
to parents is give yourself some grace. Um, this is your first time as a teacher. You're going to realize how thankful and grateful you are for what teachers do in your kids' lives. And hopefully that'll make you more involved in uh, their education in the future. All right. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Dennis. This has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning today with Dr. Dennis Peck. Thank you.